Up next is Kobe Keys, a financial educator who offers free advice to anyone wanting to establish a sound financial footing. What's the difference between a financial educator and a financial advisor? Well, someone who advises you on what to do with your finances is someone telling you, hey, you should do this, you should do that, this is where you should put your money, this is what you should do with your money. But someone such as myself who educates people will simply give people their, their options that are available to them based on their finances and say, hey, out of A, B, C, and D, this is what you're able to do. So as opposed to the advisor saying, hey, do this, choose A, choose B, I'm telling you to do this because it's better for you, I say, hey, A, B, C, and D are your options. You decide which one you want to pick. But I'm going to educate you on which one would be the smartest choice based on the finances that you have. You have certain principles that you go by uh, as far as creating or helping people out. What are some of the things that people have to do in order to uh, start creating um, their wealth? Well, I use the principles that I've come to find. If you follow people that have money, you in return should have money also based on following the same principles that they follow. So uh, what I usually do, you know, certain magazines that are out there look at, you know, different principles, people that have money, things that they did. And I've come up with different principles that I see that everybody follows in order to make sure that they reach that level of wealth to be able to pass down to, you know, other family members. So, you know, a few of the things would be you know, number one, first and foremost, for a lot of people, you have to make sure you're living within your means. You know, a lot of people, you know, decide to count on credit cards and, you know, they want to, you know, take out loans and this and that. And that just basically means that you don't have it. You're looking for other resources and other ways to create money. But the reality is you don't actually have that actual physical cash. So the first thing I always tell people as far as the first disciplinary thing um, is to make sure that you're living within your means because it's, it's, a, it's a mental thing when it comes to being wealthy. So if you're going to be disciplined and financially stable, the first thing you want to make sure you do is look at your actual cash that you have and say, this is what I have to live on, not credit cards that I'm going to have debt on, not loans that I can take out, and you know any other borrowing money from people, whatever it is, you always want to make sure based on what you have and you have a loan, this is what I'm capable of, of living with financially. Um, a couple of other things would be to, you know, get educated. That's one thing that a lot of people are not taught. Get financially educated to make sure that you understand the power of finances and how to, you know, accumulate it based on what you have. You know, a lot of people think, well, I have to make money. I have to have tons of money before I can become rich. But that's a huge misconception because the number one thing you really need to be, you know, financially wealthy is the education. So as long as you're educated, you'll know how to take what you have and start to grow and build on that as opposed to thinking you have to have so much before you start to build. Um, a couple of other things, you know, saving, learning how to save your money when it comes to living within your means, uh, managing, budgeting, you know, all of these things like that, um, getting to the point where, you want to start to become a homeowner, you know, based on the money that you have. Even if you got a plan five years from now, even 10 years from now, the idea is to start the ball rolling to get to that point where you could, you know, become a homeowner, have some kind of asset that can help you to, you know, gain wealth that's going to appreciate where you could either have something later on in the future or something that you could leave, you know, to children and, you know, people after you. Um, and, you know, you know, things like that. A, a couple of other things to make sure you, you teach your children financial literacy to make sure that they start off, you know, smart and ahead of the game before they even get to the point of being able to be controlled by someone telling them, hey, take out this credit card or, hey, take out this loan. They'll know to have the sense to say, wait a minute, I shouldn't do that, you know, before they reach that certain age. So, you know, a lot of things like that. You, that you want to pass down to to your generation after you and, you know, things that you could have within yourself to help others to accumulate wealth also within your own, you know, communities. So you are a financial educator in real estate. Tell us the difference between or the advantages or disadvantages of owning a home or renting a place to live. Are there certain advantages in one versus the other? 
or does it depend on your situation? And then ultimately, I guess home ownership would be the goal. So how does one renter reach that goal? Well, they're all, it's always based on individual circumstances. You know, everything that people want to achieve, you always have to start off on what you're doing. You know, don't ever worry about what someone else is doing, where they are. Anybody's situation is always going to be based on their own independent thing. You know, not what you see on TV or what other people are telling you, and they just ended up hearing it from somebody else they don't even know themselves. So you always want to make sure, based on your own individual uh, situation, that that's what you move off of. So with that said, you know, renters, homeowners, the idea is to always try to at least get to some point of having an asset that's going to appreciate to get you to that ball rolling of wealth. And I just personally feel like home ownership is, you know, one of the best ways to do it. So, you know, the difference, there, there are a couple of minor differences. When you want to own a home, you know, you might need that down payment or you're going to need that down payment initially, which some people don't have right away. You know, if you want to rent, they usually ask for, you know, security and first month. So it's much less of, of a, you know, bulk of money that you need initially to, you know, reach one of the two levels. You know, you got to have all your credit in place. You got to have all of your, your your bank statements and this and that. And everything when it comes to owning a home, when if you rent in it, it might be a little less strenuous financially. When you buy the house, you know, you don't have to worry about is someone else going to kick you out? Is the is the is the owner you know going to want to move his family in? Is my lease going to be up? But then on the flip side, you have to worry about is the boiler going to break? Is my roof going to leak? You know all of these things. So it's it's different ins and outs that you have to worry about when you own in a home. You have more control as opposed to being a renter. But when you're a renter, you don't have to worry about so much of the responsibilities. As we get older, I feel like the fear of having responsibilities should become less and less and less like when you want to make such a strong powerful financial move it's like i always say you have to take the good with the bad sometimes you want to just take that leap and say you know what i'm willing to take on the risk of being responsible to make sure that my roof is okay being responsible to make sure that my boiler is okay because you know in the long run you get more out of it as opposed to renting where all of your money is just going down the drain and, you know, you don't have nothing to show for it or nothing to pass down to your children, you know, 5, 10, 15 years from now. So those are just a, a few key differences. But the idea for someone that's renting to want to take that leap and move to the next level, it all starts with that number one principle, which is living within your means. You want to make sure that once you're doing that and you have that discipline mentally, Everything else is going to fall into place after that. So now you're living within your means. Now you'll be able to save uh, 10% or so uh, of your income. So I'm a customer. I want to come to you as my financial advisor uh, or, or educator as far as uh, creating my own wealth is concerned. What happens when I come talk to you or come for your education? Mainly for me, honestly, the people that I deal with are people that own homes that are going through some kind of mortgage trouble because I myself a few years back did go through some mortgage trouble and I know how hard that could be. I know how stressful it could be. Um, I had to do a short sale. I had no way to do a loan modification. It was just, it was really bad for me. And that was another thing based on me not being so financially aware. You know, I took the little bit of ed education I had and moved on that and I wasn't fully well-rounded. So then I ended up, you know, going underwater. Like I said, had to do a short sell and, and literally had to, you know, dig myself up out of, a, out of a hole that I took so long to get out of because I didn't want to come to terms that this was something that I had to do. And eventually I had to do the short sell anyway. So my experience with that led me to wanting to be more educated financially, wanting to be more aware and just building myself mentally so I won't have to count on other people to tell me things. So I won't have to think, oh, I know something when I really don't. And, you know, I just started taking classes, which is one of the main principles to educate yourself. And, you know, that's what I did. And ever since then, I've actually been, you know, talking to homeowners that are going through mortgage trouble. Free services, because I know when you're in situations like that, you don't want to go talking to people and asking them for money. You know, because they're already going through problems such as I was. And I always thought, well, what would I have needed when I was going through that problem? 
You know, if somebody came and knocked on my door and said, hey, I'm offering this, this, and this, what would I want those things to be that would have helped me to get through my problem? And that's how I built up, you know, the um, analysis that I created to help other people because me being someone that went through it, I know exactly what they need. So if someone was to come to me, uh, as I said, I usually, you know, take care of people or, or deal with people, free services that are going through mortgage problems. The first thing that's first and foremost, we have to figure out what the financial situation is. Because when people are going through a mortgage issue, they always look at it like, oh, my house, my house, my house. But the reality is it's not a house. It's a financial problem that you're going through more than anything. And if you get that financial problem straightened out, then the house is going to fall into place. You know, because if, you know, if I had it like that and I could say, hey, I have a million dollars or five million for you, here you go, and we walk away, you know, that house problem would go away based on the fact that it's about finances. When you ask that question to them, what do they have to give you? What kind of information do they have to give you? So the analysis is based solely on income and expenses. That's it. Every bit of income that the person has, every form of expenses that the person has. And when you break those two things down, you can take it forward from there and determine exactly what the next steps are for someone going through a problem. So you would take any income that you have from uh, any work, any job history that you're going through, any, some people may have tenants, um, you know, some people may have uh, 401k, stocks, whatever it is, any kind of income that you can produce versus the expenses that you're going out, your mortgage, your, uh, you know, child care, insurances, uh, water bills, light bills, uh, electricity, food bill, whatever, it is, every single expense that you have. And I break it down to show you how it looks visually, because a lot of people, they'll say, oh, I know I'm going through problems. I know I have this, that. But when you see it with, with your eyes, it's such a clearer picture. So I break it down. I show you this is what it is. And all of this is based on the information that they're giving me. So it's really no, you know, underhanded, shady, whatever they're telling me their expenses are and their income is. That's how we break it down to get to the, the bottom line and say, OK, how do we go from here? So they tell me all the expenses they have, all of the income, everything they have. And based on the analysis, I can actually show them what different options they have based on whatever it is they want to do. Like I meet a lot of people, homeowners want to do loan modifications, homeowners want to sell. Some people just, you know, they want to stay and not do anything. Some people want to move out and run. It's so many different situations that I hear of and that I see. So I let them know based on every bit of information, factual information that they give me, I can show them exactly all the options that they have available to them and what would make more sense for, you know, for them to do. Where does savings come into this? At this point, when we determine, okay, this is what the best decision is, or these are your options, what do you feel like the best decision is for you based on knowing, you know, what you know now? Savings is always going to be one of the things that you have to keep in the back of your mind to say, okay, at what point do I want to get back into it? Because I'm never going to tell anyone, hey, this is never for you. You're not doing it. Even if people are to the point where they're in my situation and they have no choice but to do some sort of sell or short sell, I still recommend getting back on your feet and getting into it again because I know that that's what I did. So I would never tell anybody, okay, that's it. Don't forget about it. You don't need to save anything. In the back of your mind, you always want to make sure you still thinking about saving, you're still thinking about buying a new house or doing a modification, whatever makes sense for you, and move it forward from there. Because I always tell people the idea is to move forward. When the pressure is on and the stress is thick, that's not the time to fall back and get miserable, you know, get sad. That's the time to strap your boots on and say, okay, this is the situation I'm in. These are the moves that I need to make. You know, so I always, you know, recommend when people are going through that, Find out as much as you can find out, you know, through education, you know, talking to me about, you know, what the different options are and you move from there. So saving is something you always want to have in the back of your mind, regardless of what you decide to do, because that's going to be one of the key roles in the principles of regaining that wealth again. Okay, Kobe, as we uh, start to end this conversation, 
how do people get in touch with you? I mean, you're an educator, um, and, and you're talking about free services. I don't see how that works. Well, based on all of the education that I've accumulated throughout the years and realize how powerful it is, I've come to learn how to use that education to get back into, you know, the real estate just as much as I suggest, you know, all of the clients that I deal with do and start to start that path, start that path to wealth again. So based on my real estate investments, I that's how I, you know, survive. So when I'm doing, you know, these things uh, and giving out this free information is solely on giving back and understanding that there's a lot of people out there that are like I was that wasn't educated. So this is just something that I really do with my time that I figured I can create to give back to people that I know need it, that are going through problems. So I don't charge for it. It's really, it's really no need for me to charge for it because based on, you know, everything that I know now, I made sure that I did, like I teach everyone else, strap, strap on your boots, no time to, you know, feel sorrow for yourself and be down. Just go out there, get back on your feet and get the ball rolling again. And that's what I did for myself. So based on me, you know, being financially secure with my investments, I really don't have to charge anybody. It's just free information that I, I really want to give out, you know, to the people to make sure that the community is fully aware of the financial education that's out there. Okay, then tell us how folks can get in touch with you. Uh, well, I don't have a website, being that, you know, it's just something that I've decided that I want to give back to people and talk to people individually. So the best way for people to contact me is either through phone or email. Uh, you can reach me at keys, K-E-Y-S, the number two real estate at Gmail. So that's keys to real estate at gmail.com. Or you can reach me at 917-280-5373. That's 917-280-5373. Or if you're in the new world of technology, you could always text me at that same number and I'll get back to you. That was financial educator Kobe Keys who offers free financial education and can be reached at 917-280-5373. That's 917-280-5373. Or email him at keys2 at gmail.com.